जिस तरह यूनिवर्सिटी लाइफ चलती है वी ऑल ग्रेजुएटेड लाइफ दिस हैप्पीली मोस्ट ऑफ देम नॉट नोइंग वट देयर फ्यूचर्स वुड बी वट वुड बी देयर जॉब डिस्क्रिप्शन वेयर वुड दे बी वर्किंग इन विच इन्वायरमेंट सो टर्नज आउट के द प्रॉब्लम इज नॉट स्टार्टिंग फ्राम द यूनिवर्सिटी लेवल इट इज़ डीप रूटेड वैन आई वॉज इन प्रजूमेबली क्लास थ्री I was a very average student and faced this backlash from teachers that oh you're not doing well and being in the classroom I was being differentiated from a person another child who was performing well so the segregation in the classroom and uh, the problem that the teacher could not address was that I was unable to comprehend the subject matter in the first place I could not connect to it on a deeper level so I could perform better in my uh, exams so uh, I actually realized this problem of mine when I was studying in university and I was in my third semester I studied a subject computer graphics over there they taught us how to build a house and uh, do stuff about uh, making 3d models and i was so interested i spent the whole night creating a 3d model of my own institution and took it to my uh, supervisor the next morning i showed him that so he was thrilled that wow you can do this the reason was that i was able to connect deeply to that subject because i was able to visualize it see it better and comprehend it so what happens in uh, these classrooms is that mo- we don't realize most of the students st- studying beside us are facing a lot of uh, learning disabilities like adhd where they cannot actually focus on the subject matter and uh, individualized instruction for each learner is the ultimate goal whereas on the school level if you see today most of the schools are incorporating methods that are old school and have been around for nearly a century uh if you look around what we've done about this problem is that uh, i looked around for a lot of solutions what i found was we're turning books to ebooks we're ch- turning lecture halls to massive open online courses and we're turning boards into smart boards so what we're trying to do over here is actually making the same content more reachable to more people don't get me wrong that is all right but the point here is that the teaching mechanism is the same you are not innovating in the teaching methodologies so in this age when you can't live without uh, being distracted in your environment and the study is getting tougher i felt the need for a better solution a better medium of education not powerpoint not pdfs not videos not 3d models but something bigger for me it was vr so we'll get started to that how it happened i told you all the problems about private institutions can you imagine these problems inside the public sector how magnified would they be and when i research further i found out that 75% of schools in pakistan do not have science labs you all maybe have been through institutions who have provided you with facilities with which you can actually gain insight on your theoretical knowledge by practically implementing it but most of the children across the nation do not get that opportunity and i saw that at master yubs uh, park school i went there and children were holding books memorizing and reciting frog dissections who over here is from the biology background so we used to do frog dissections right a child who is underprivileged has a lesser much lesser chance than you to actually perform that experiment in real time which in fact does not let them gain an experiential insight into the lecture into the lesson which in turn hinders them from future career opportunities and creates the segregation so to bridge this gap i thought okay i am good at computer graphics it helps you visualize 
and I was learning about VR, it helps you train. These children can't go to the laboratories, Ivy League laboratories that we call them. They can't go there. So why not bring the laboratories to them in a medium of education that has never been possible before? Not through a tablet, not through a phone, in an immersive medium that actually blocks all their visual distractions inside the classroom, auditory distractions, and links them to their curriculum in a way that has never been possible before. So we set out to create fully simulated virtual reality labs for these students. Inside the VR environment, these students did not need to care about where they were. They could perform experiments just like a real lab at the cost less than that of a tablet and more immersive and near to real experience. So you'll see a lot of uh, videos from the tent school that we deployed our solutions over there. And the students were actually able to grasp better concepts with this technology. And the frog dissection. OK, so uh, after doing this experimentation and after doing this uh, survey, we got to the costs. It takes almost 50 times less cost to deploy a virtual lab with an experience that is better than an actual one. We'll explain later how that happens through a live demonstration over here. So uh, one cost of a lab is about uh, implementing it at one time, the labor cost, the hardware cost, and one cost is that you bear annually, that businesses bear annually about renewing their services, about the gas bills, about uh, the chemicals that you refill, and all that. So all of that when digitized and mimicked into a virtual reality li uh, lab, you just need to pay $75,000 in instead of 20 uh, lakh Pakistani rupees. So uh, as you know that it gets digital, it just takes less than three days to be deployed, whereas a normal lab can takes to set up almost uh, three months. And the chance for accident, yes. The children could actually perform dangerous experiments inside the classroom and learn better through that way. They could actually throw acids on their hands and see what happens. Things that you cannot do in a real lab environment, they were able to do that at a cost that is 50 times less than that. So uh, we need to make sure in this solution where the teachers come in. We know that uh, the teachers in this solution are the ones who will be adopting this technology and providing it to the to the students. So we need to see how they come in in this and what is their response after using this technology. Okay. So now I'm in a virtual environment and I am going near a microscope. I can keep a $10,000 microscope inside my pocket and perform lab experiments inside it, like seeing the stomata cells of a leaf. I can go inside and zoom in the cells and view them better than any other medium that exists at the moment. This lab, when implemented, and its impact when measured, turns out to be 130 times more than a traditional learning environment. So what you see over here, what you do over here, you actually remember it while sleeping because you did it with your hands, not just learned. What if you were given a book about playing cricket? One of you just read the book, and the other person actually practiced it, environment. The retention rate increases by 130%. But the effective learning, when combined with the teacher, increases by 101%, which cannot be done with any medium of education available. And uh, this is just straight out opportunities for the rest of the community to be inclusive with everyone other. And I think 
the next quantum leap in education in science education is not going to be about a new research or a new technology coming out i think it's about the teachers actually implementing that technology adopting that te that technology for their students inside the classroom so they can be better learners and they can be better creators and as kaid azam uh, rahmatullah said that you are made of sterling material and are second to none so it's your responsibility at your end to adopt these technologies learn from them and the teachers responsibility to bring these things to their students inside the classroom and cope up with the learning environment thank you so much Thank you.